video for a long time. Uh, I know a lot of people on the Discord have been asking for this video for a while. I've, I've been saying I'm going to do it for a while. I'm finally doing it. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a repeater main. I've been playing the game since March 2019. And uh, it's... Yeah, it's been two years now. Uh, most of that time, significant portion of it's been playing repeaters. So uh, here I'm kind of passing my wisdom off to you guys. I have uh, a lesson plan here <laughs> all ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to go over is the basic equipment uh, for repeaters. Now when you're, when you're playing the weapon, uh, your entire playstyle of the weapon is based on your modularization uh, of your setup here. Uh, your setup obviously includes your cells. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to go into repeater cells until I get into part two, uh, which I will release immediately after this video, and that's going to be like the advanced section. So I'm going to get right into the barrels. Now, uh, your barrels are basically all of your elemental differences. Uh, they don't do anything other than that. Uh, obviously, if you power surge them, they're stronger, uh, so try to do that. Uh, but other other than that, uh, the only you don't get prismatic cells currently for repeaters, which is big sad. Very, very upset. It's been almost a year now, or no, I think it has been a year since Escalations came out, and still no prismatic cells on repeaters. So uh, I'm gonna try to keep my complaining as short as possible, though. Um, but those do still give you the legendary abilities and the element, of course. Uh, your chamber, uh, all three of these chambers are actually really good in different situations, and they're going to completely change the playstyle of your weapon. So let's start with full bore chamber, which you're not going to earn until you um, unlock it from the Slayer Path now. But full bore chamber is usually considered best DPS for larger behemoths, and is particularly good... Um, uh, it, it's typically considered better than salvo chamber in most situations, unless you're specifically doing a very niche build. Um, how full bore chamber works is, you're gonna throw it on. Uh, if you're empowered, you're gonna get a big full shot here that's gonna launch you back, and that's gonna hit um, all of the different hitboxes on the behemoth, so like their legs, their head, their tail, and so forth. Uh, and obviously the longer it travels, the more times uh, the damage ticks. Uh, if you're not empowered, you're going to do a quick tap like that. It's going to do significantly less damage. The cone effect is much smaller since it's only a single point shooting through. And uh, you don't get that launch back effect, which is really good. God, this guy's annoying. Um, uh, you don't get that launch back effect, which is really uh, good in certain situations, like if a behemoth's getting ready to do an attack. Um, it'll launch you out of that attack, and that's a very pro move uh, that you get out of that. Uh, so the next move I'm going to go into here is the Marksman Chamber. Now, Marksman Chamber is especially good if you're playing with friends and a team that knows what to look for. Uh, if you're shooting it normally, you're just going to get a little mark for yourself. I'm going to skip over that. Uh, if you shoot it empowered, uh, it's going to show that to everybody. Your whole team's going to see that. And that's going to boost the uh, damage of the whole team, as well as significantly boost the damage of yourself to that specific part that you do target. And that is uh, exceedingly good uh, in lots of fights, especially now in Hunting Grounds, since it can affect more people than just three other people. Uh, and getting into the final one, here we have the Salvo Chamber. Now Salvo Chamber uh, is what you start the game off with. Now, Salvo Chambo Empowered is like a shotgun. I'm going to do it here so you can visually see it. It's kind of uh, three shots in a shotgun formation. They spread out. And uh, in order to get maximum efficiency out of that, the whole point in taking this particular uh, weapon is so that you can do something like this to a single part where you just obliterate one single part for a ton of damage as opposed to full bore chamber is spread out through the whole behemoth. Uh, it does do arguably a little bit less damage than full bore chamber assuming um, you're getting the maximum efficiency out of it uh, but you are getting significantly more damage to a single part which is the whole point of doing that it really helps uh, with part breaks and uh, it helps you uh, uh, when I get into my advanced uh, lesson I'm going to teach you how to round robin kind of uh, behemoths 
and how to make maximum efficiency out of those uh, heartbreak builds. Uh, I'm just going to switch back to full bore for me here. 99% uh, of the time, I'm going to recommend Captain's Grip. Uh, that one's pretty obvious. Uh, if you read it, it's very cut and dry. Uh, you empower boost, you throw it. It's got three little swords. You grab it. Everybody's boosted. Like those guys over there just got boosted. It's got a pretty decent range. Uh, and then everybody's attack speed is up. Absolutely fantastic ability. The only time you should ever run uh, Saboteur Grip, in my opinion anyway, is if you're running solo and you really want a reliable boop. Uh, it is probably one of the best boops in the game in my opinion. Uh, you got a long period of time where, from when you throw it to when it hits the ground, and during that entire time, if it touches a behemoth anywhere, it instantly detonates. Uh, however, if it hits the ground, that's where things turn to start to turn kind of sour. Um, it's it makes it sound like it's super cool, like it's a mine, like hey, I can just you know throw this on the ground, and then uh, first of all, it doesn't even activate until that orange cone kind of pops up, like a Ghostbuster trap. Uh, and then it only detonates if a if part of the Behemoth's framework touches it. So a Behemoth could run right over it. As long as none of their legs uh, hit it, it doesn't blow up. And just like you saw this uh, jerkwad over here, just kind of like hit it. Um, you can totally do that. That is a super awesome viable strategy if it is on the ground. Um, that actually just blew up from the, <laughs> the um, Pangar Lantern that was on the ground there. But if it's on the ground, and a behemoth running over it, what you want to do is you want to pop. You want to shoot it like that. And that's going to pop the area of effect. And as long as any point of that area of effect hits the behemoth's head, uh, it will boop the behemoth and he'll get interrupted and uh, crash into the ground. And it is very satisfying to do that. Uh, it's particularly useful to do stuff like that when you're waiting for um, Riftstalker, for example. Riftstalker's uh, got his portals up. And you got a empowered reload right before he started his uh, his little death zone, and you throw this out there before the cooldown uh, comes up. You wait for him to come at you, and then pow, you interrupt him right there. It's a super fantastic way to to get some really reliable boops. But again, I typically like to uh, go with the captain script on 99% of the builds, especially if you're playing in a team because it's just so much more effective. And uh, no matter what kind of build you're doing, extra attack speed on repeaters is always your main focus. Uh, mods, I'm only going to go after useful mods right here. Uh, so I'm only going to talk about uh, a few of them here. Uh, we got Lucky Magazine, which is absolutely phenomenal. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the whole point of Lucky Magazine, no matter what you're doing, is that... Uh, uh, as, as you can see, it's 2% critical strike chance for each round missing. So when you're playing that kind of playstyle, you always want to make sure to empty your chamber first. And then shoot, because then your entire uh, special ability, whether it be full bore chamber or salvo chamber, is going to get that... My nose itches here. Is going to get that full 24% increased critical hit chance in addition to all, whatever other bonuses you have. Uh, absolutely phenomenal uh, ability. The other good ones that I'm going to pull up here are Precision Sights. Now Precision Sights is uh, for a very niche build. It's the marks, It's called a Marksman build. And when you run Marksman build, you typically run Marksman Chamber and Precision Sights. And you focus one part at a time uh, until it's absolutely obliterated. Uh, those kind of builds require um, typically requires a... Flawless build, which if you're new to the game, that basically means you're a glass cannon. You're running all kinds of attack power, zero defense. And uh, you can absolutely shred behemoths really quickly with those kind of builds, but I typically don't play them because I'm uh, uh, usually playing tenacious builds now. Uh, and uh, but, but it is a really good build. It is a really good uh, mod to use, but it's only for like that one niche build, that marksman build. Uh, that I might go over at some point in the future, but not today. Uh, scope Sights sounds great, but it's trash. Don't use it. <laughs> uh, Tactician Magazine is absolutely godlike. Oh my god, Tactician Magazine. Especially if you're running Trials, this is the magazine you're going to use for Trials. This is the magazine, if you're running Group Trials anyway, I should specify that. Because Tactician Magazine, 
gives you extremely reduced cooldown times on all your abilities. And Tactician Magazine is what lets your entire team stay buffed for 100% of the trial. And it is the only thing that lets you keep up your Marksman Chamber up 100% of the time. It is the only way to do that. Otherwise, it's going to expire for like, I think like 4 to 5 seconds, something like that, before you can get another one up. And it's no good. But if you're running Marksman Chamber, like the second that that Marksman Chamber is expiring, your next one's off a of cooldown and bam, the, the mark's up. You're good. Uh, also, it helps you keep the Captain's Grip up 100% of the time. Uh... I do believe it expires shortly before it refreshes all the way. Like you can see it's over half now and it's not up to half yet there. So again, it lets you keep up that captain's grip buff up 100% of the time, which is necessary for trials. Uh, so really good there. But as a beginner, uh, definitely try to get that um, uh, Lucky Magazine up uh, early. It's definitely the best one to play for a large majority of the game. and it really gets you some really powerful uh, special attacks there. You just got to get used to fully emptying your chamber before you use them and you'll be set. Now, uh, let's get into the next thing, which is the prisms. Now, again, I'm only going to go over the good prisms. Uh, some of these other prisms are definitely worth playing uh, and might be good in very, very specific niche situations. But um, I'm going to go after the top three here. Uh, top one, Searing Prism. 95% of the time, that's going to be your top DPS. Uh, I'm going to go over why I'm using Sternheart here in a second. But uh, that's just going to get you the most damage uh, overall. Uh, Eclipse Prism is really good only if you're fighting a very slow, very non-moving behemoth. Because in order to keep up the, the maximum orb bonus, you have to constantly be doing damage. And uh, if you if a behemoth runs away and gets away from you for even a few seconds and you lose all those orbs, your overall DPS is going to be lower than if you just use Searing Prism. Uh, so that's kind of like the the explanation there. Now Stoneheart Prism is useful only for tenacious builds, but it is godlike if you're using tenacious builds because you can get over 100% critical hit rate. And uh, it's also defensive at the same time, so then you don't have to slot something like Iceborne, and you can use those extra cell slots to give you more attack power. It's really great. Um, but as a beginner, definitely try to get Searing Prism uh, until you can start getting into some of the endgame escalation content and actually, uh, you know, worry about stuff like getting Tenacious builds. Uh, very, very good uh, Prism. Definitely massively increases your overall DPS. Uh, I'm going to get into some of the equipment that repeaters are going to use. Uh, again, I'm only going to go over the good ones. Uh, for helmets, unfortunately, the only super good ones are not going to be available till later game. They're going to be the Dark Watch and the Light's Crown. Uh, Dark Watch is great because it gives you rage. It's really good for discipline builds, which uh, if you don't know what a discipline build is as a beginner, you'll find out very soon, especially if you get into the Discord chats and go over some of the meta builds. Um, but for almost every build, I use Light's Crown. Absolutely phenomenal build. It gives you Conduit, which is one of the best uh, abilities you can have for repeaters. Uh, and it gives you Technique Slot, which is, again, one of the better cell types for repeaters. So definitely SS tier uh, helmet right there. Uh, if you're looking for some other ones that are that are okay, um, the uh, Thraxis Scream is a later game one that you'll get. Um but honestly, most of these helmets are not super great for repeaters. Most of them have um, other stuff that's not going to be great. Uh, Hellplate Cask is probably the closest thing to an early game helmet uh, that you might want to invest into because Rage Hunter is a mid-tier ability, and then it's got a Technique Cell. So I'd say maybe go for that. Um, Etheric Attunement is eh, mid to low tier for repeaters, but it gives you a technique cell, which is uh, good. So you can get that uh, plus six conduit, maybe. Uh, but yeah, most of these are not great for repeaters. So I'm just going to dip into chess pieces now. Oh, that is not the right menu. Um, Boiler Resolve, definitely top tier for any uh, Iceborne discipline build. Uh, Dark Marrow, 
Uh, definitely very good for uh, rage overpower, um, discipline builds. Jurassic scale plate, top tier for repeaters. It's a really weird thing because typically it's garbage on almost any other weapon. But Etheric Attunement is really good for uh, repeaters. Namely, to keep up that conduit bonus, it's really good. Uh, you can get a lot of DPS off with your lantern if you got plus six Etheric Attunement on. Typically, I don't. But um, if you wanted to spring for it, go for it. Uh, lantern power is really good on repeaters. Flight's Virtue, top tier for repeaters. It's got cunning for critical hit rate. It's got a uh, utility cell slot to get your conduit up. It's really good. Uh, Mantle of Thorns, same reason. Predator's top tier for repeaters since you're not getting hit a whole lot. And repeater gives you a massive damage bonus. Uh, and then it's got a utility slot. Uh, Quill Spike Jacket, really good if you're uh, playing with a friend who's got um, a Warpike and he's wounding parts. That Savagery bonus is really great. Thrax of Shadow, top tier for any class, cunning in a technique slot. Really, really good uh, chess pieces. Lots of choices here. I know it seems daunting, but um, I'll go over a few builds in my video today before, um, before I get off, just so you can kind of see how to piece those together a little bit. Uh, glove pieces, we got um, Boreal Might is really good. It's got Rage. It's got a Power Cell slot, really good for discipline builds. Light's Refuge is, again, top tier, Technique Slot, and Conduit. Both really, really good things for repeaters. Malkarian's Grip, good for any weapon. Uh, it's got Predator in a Technique Slot, top tier. Shocking Grasp is, like, mid-tier, I'd say. It's got a Thick Attunement, which is really good, and it's got a Technique Slot, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, I can't see. I think it might actually be a, a Utility Cell, um, which you could use for uh, Conduit, of course. Uh, Turgido's Brawn. Triple S class for repeaters. It's got overpower, which is necessary for those repeater part breaks. Uh, and it's got a power slot on it. Um, which you could put a second overpower into. Or if you're playing uh, uh, discipline builds, you know, you could put discipline into it. Since you probably already have uh, rage 6 from your other abilities. Volcanic grips is another um, mid-tier glove for the weapon. Also, it can be a niche thing if you're making a very specific build, uh, a very specific discipline build that requires your chest and headpiece to be other things that aren't rage. This way you can at least get rage and a utility slot in there. Um, because again, Conduit 6 is basically necessary for any uh, repeater build. And uh, some of these other ones can be okay. Like Molten and a Power Cell is uh, mid to low tier. It's something nice to get early game, but uh, Volcanic Grips I'd suggest over that. Uh, there's some other okay ones in here, uh, like Nasher Grips might be a uh, low to mid-tier uh, thing to get early game and then keep for a while. But uh, let's move on to legs here. Uh, again, Boreas Leg Pieces, really good for discipline build. If you're trying to just like take it easy and have Iceborne on and have a kind of a casual gameplay experience. Uh, Pangar Legs, uh, another really good one for Iceborne builds because it gives you that overpower that you want for repeaters and it's got a defense slot on it. Um, uh, very little difference between these two. Basically just one's got a technique slot and one uh, is essentially trades that for a uh, overpower. Um, but typically the only defense slot you ever want to put on for repeaters is um, Iceborne. Uh, or if you really, really only have room for one defense slot, Parasitic. But that usually doesn't come up. Uh, do, 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 do. Thrax's Guile. Let me just make sure I'm not missing any here. Uh, oh, okay, I got a couple more still. Uh, Thrax's Guile, top tier. It's got Cunning. It's got a Technique slot. Both uh, top tier cells. Uh, Volcanic Treads. Very, very good early game. Uh, boots to get and then keep for a long time. They're still top tier even end game because they got rage and a power cell in them. Really good for discipline builds. Uh, and then I, I almost missed Stride of Thorns. I didn't <laughs> talk about that there. It's got Pred and a Technique cell, or I mean a Utility cell in it. So really good for um, getting that Pred and getting that Conduit. Uh, now a lot of these builds you might have noticed have um, Utility cells in them and you're going to need four Utility slots total. Uh, if you're playing Trials, because you're going to need both Cunning and you're going to need um, uh, 
brain work. Crap, it's in my build over here. Um, like like this build, for example, uh, Catalyst. You're going to need both Catalyst 6 and Conduit 6 uh, to run trials. Those are both necessary things. So you see here, I have a lot of um, uh, pieces slotted for that. But um, that'll be covered more in the advanced lesson. Uh, I'm just going to go over my two sample builds right here. This is my Escalation build. Uh, this is also a Tenacious build. I'm very proud of this build. I made this... Uh, I made this build extremely early on. It is incredibly uh, powerful, and I do take credit for being the original creator of this build. I have a video uh, that I released like days after uh, Terra came out, um, showcasing how powerful this build uh, can be. I've I've had 54,000 damage full bore chambers on standard like round four, just fighting a couple behemoths, and you can one shot Agarus with it if you shoot from root to root because it's ridiculously overpowered but the whole point of this build is i'm going to kind of go down my my reasoning here barrel doesn't matter change barrel change your barrel whatever use your elemental advantage use whatever legendary ability you like have fun full bore chamber need the full bore chamber um you're trying to get as many hits as possible with this thing uh captain script like, very necessary for this build high attack speed gives you more shields faster which gives you more critical rate faster which helps you build shields faster because you're hitting higher damage, and that's going to give you more frequent shields with the way that Stoneheart Prism works. Because um, the percentage chance you have of gaining that shield is based on the damage dealt. So the more damage you do, the higher percentage chance you have of gaining shields, and it's just a vicious cycle of gaining shields faster and faster and faster. It's a really good build. <laughs> um, Lucky Magazine in there, obviously, just for the extra critical hit rate. Um, eventually, uh, if you build up a 1,000 plus shields, uh, it you start to not need it. But definitely, um, for the first um, bit of that fight, it really helps. And typically, the fights don't last long enough to build up uh, more than 100% critical hit rate with the shields. So it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, again, like I said, this is triple S tier uh, headpiece. I use it in almost all my repeater builds. Uh, conduit, and um, I stick Berserker in there. Berserker is really really good for repeaters because it's a fast fire weapon you build up those damage stacks on berserker really quick and um with a tenacious build yeah you're losing six percent damage um for losing 300 health but the main reason you're running tenacious is for the critical hit chance not the damage bonus and then in exchange for that six percent you're gaining 35 percent more damage so it's a 29 percent damage gain over there and that's still pretty big for anything uh, conduit, of course, like I said, is necessary. Um, I really wish there was a better chest play I could use for this, but um, there's really not. Like, I need I need a power cell, and the only other options for chest piece I have that give me power cells um, give me trash abilities. Like, uh, I don't do stagger damages with repeaters. Repeaters do zero stagger damage. It doesn't happen, so that's worthless. Nine lives is terrible. Uh, just like fortress is terrible like none of these fit so i'm just kind of uh etheric attunement is still really good i love etheric attunement it helps me spam my lantern uh which is um usually doing great damage anyway because i'm using draskai and draskai does damage exactly like full bore chamber so i'm already trying to line myself up anyway so draskai lantern uh works fine with that uh Turgador is brawn obviously i need overpower six I get it from just having that on with an overpower in there. Thraxis Guile, double cunning, I'm set. <laughs> like, it's it's just a, a really good combination there. Um, the reason I use Drask Lantern is because uh, the instant ability massively helps you get that really big full board chamber damage off. Uh, always try to get in the habit of popping your uh, lantern tap before you full board. Do it for long enough and it becomes muscle memory like <clears throat> even when i'm playing other weapons sometimes i'll just pop it because i'm so used to it uh, other cells you're going to want to slot in here uh you can run sprinter <coughs> excuse me i need to talking a lot there um you can run sprinter sprinter is really great uh but honestly it's kind of like whatever you feel like you can you can run uh evasion you can, it, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to affect your attack power whatsoever. 
Uh, you could argue that Sprinter increases your attack power because it helps you get to the Behemoth faster because you're doing zero damage if you're not close enough. But like that's that's about it. Um, that's all there is to it. Uh, I'm not really going to get into items. Uh, items are kind of a general thing. So play with whatever you feel like is comfortable for you. Yeah. Alright. Um, last thing I'm going to go over with for basics of the weapon are uh, animation locks. Now, as playing repeater, you have very few animation locks. Uh, just holding down the button on your controller or keyboard or whatever, uh, you're just going to shoot. Now, while you're shooting, if I hit the dodge button and I'm in the middle of shooting a shot, it will wait until I'm done shooting and then it will roll. So you don't have 100% freedom in being able to dodge whenever you want, uh, but it is pretty close. Now, when I say that uh, attack speed is really important to repeaters, um, another benefit of that high attack speed is that you finish your shooting animation faster and that roll will be more responsive to um, when you hit the button to when you actually be able to dodge on the screen because of the weight. Um, you have several animation locks uh, that don't let you roll. One of them is reloading. Doesn't let you uh, roll until you're finished with your reload. So always try to make sure you're in a safe spot for that. Uh, whether it be in a safe spot on the behemoth or make you make sure that you have enough time uh, in between when you start reloading to a potential behemoth attack coming at you. Now, if you know you're fighting a behemoth like Nasher that likes to stomp on the ground a lot, uh, do not recommend uh, doing an empowered reload until after he finishes an attack or attack chain, because then he stands there for a few seconds and that's the perfect time to reload. Uh, but if you but if he's just standing there and you go up to try to reload, he could start an attack animation and you'd be totally helpless. So don't uh, do that. Um, your uh, abilities, you have very little uh, delay in between. There is a small delay, kind of like when you finish shooting. It's a little bit longer than that, but. Um, if you have an incoming behemoth attack, don't try to throw a grip and then roll into it to grab it unless you have you know for a fact you have enough uh, advanced timing. It's it's super awesome to like have a pangar tail come in at you and you're like, "Oh, I can see it's starting over there and he's going to sweep all the way around." So I'm totally going to throw a captain's grip and then roll through my captain's grip and the tail at the same time cuz that's just awesome. Uh, and then it's good times had by all. Uh, and then the final thing is your attack. You have zero opportunity to dodge the whole time you're charging up all three of your special uh, chambers, whether that be Marksman Chamber, Full Bore, or uh, Salvo. So make sure you have a really good positioning or um, uh, availability to know that you're going to line up your shot correctly and n know that you're going to um, be fine during that attack. Uh, if you're a beginner and you don't know all the behemoth attacks, this is just something that takes practice. Uh, I'll, cover, I'll cover that a little bit more in my advanced lesson. But for now, um, hopefully that covered any questions you might have had about repeaters. Oh wait, I almost missed one thing here. Let me, let me check here. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I, I, this should have been the very first thing I said, honestly. Uh, repeaters are not a ranged weapon. They are 100% not a ranged weapon. All right, you see, you see here, I'm taking shots. I'm doing kind of like meh damage. Do I have? I have. I need to change my equipment here before I forget to, because I can totally tell right now that um, maybe I don't. Oh, that's from Berserker. Never mind. Uh, so you, you can kind of see that I'm not doing uh, great damage. I'm doing, you know, a hundreds unless I'm critting. Then I'm doing double that. But uh, if I come up here, now you see my crosshair is red. Uh, that red crosshair means that I'm in optimal damage position. And now I'm doing 50% more damage. I'm doing significantly higher damage than I was before. And uh, that's because repeaters are more like shotguns than pistols. Uh, anybody who's uh, called them pistols in Discord knows that I will yell at you. <laughs> they are definitely not... Uh, pistols. There is no pistol on this planet that loses 
half of its uh, stopping potential of shooting something more than 10 feet away. It just doesn't exist. Uh, so always try to treat it like a uh, shotgun and that you have to be close. Now that empowered reload, I don't think I went over it, so I'm just going to go over again real quick. Again, that gives you big damage boost. You see I'm doing significantly more damage since I'm doing that empowered reload. And you have to be really close uh, to do that. You have to be in typically like sword melee range to do it. Like right here, not doing it. You don't see, you don't see all that extra blue glowy stuff, but you come up here, you see all that extra blue glowy stuff kind of like getting sucked into the repeaters. That's how you know you have an empowered reload. Also, it gives you that reload blue meter up there right below your skills. Every time I do this, you see it go back up to full. Wow, but if I do it from back here, not refilling. Um, I'll cover that a little bit more in my advanced lesson, but uh, that should be everything that I have for for the beginner lesson for real this time, I promise. <laughs> um, if you have any more questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I will get back to you. Uh, other than that, uh, feel free to check out my advanced lesson, which I'll be doing immediately after this. Uh, it should just be called part two. Uh, and that'll cover cells, uh, optimizing your attack rotations, line up, how to line up skill shots, how to, went, uh, how to optimize your skill shot damage, uh, to, to, uh, uh, how to do part break rotations, uh, I call it going round robin, uh, and, uh, facts about, um, other repeater mechanics like miscellaneous stuff so uh feel free to check out that video if you enjoyed this one otherwise i'll see you guys on the hunting grounds